I made it to TCT again. It's TCT 2019 and I'm here thanks to Do It 3D. Um, well, so thank you guys for actually flying me over here and for sponsoring this trip. Uh, to have you here. Yeah, you guys have a bunch of stuff to show off. Um, but for those of you who don't know what Do It 3D are and what you guys are making, can you just fill us in on what the company is and what, you know, what, 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 are, you, what are you making? Of course. So um, Do It manufactures a, quite a wide range now of uh, electronics controllers for originally 3D printers, but now into CNC and other things. So we basically make electronics, software, firmware for machine control, primarily 3D printers. And I do have a Do It 2 from you guys, um, which I've been recently using, and I'm liking it a lot. That is not a sponsored message. That is just my opinion. You're showing that off, and that obviously has a ton of expandability and features already. But the big new thing today is Do It 3. So what, what, what are people using that for? What would people be using that for? So I suppose Do It 3 is an is an upgrade on some features of Duet 2, but it doesn't completely replace Duet 2. We're planning on keeping Duet 2 going. I just had to get that out. Duet 3 gives you even more expandability. So on a Duet 2, you can get up to 12 stepper motors um, with the expansion board and a little bit of external ste stepper drivers. With, uh, with uh, Duet 3, we've got a CAN bus system, which means that on the main board, you'd have six. And we haven't fully tested how much the maximum is, but we believe at least another 24 stepper motors on, on eight expansion boards, for example, or potentially tool boards, uh, which is an, another thing that we'll talk about in a, in a minute. The other big change for Duet 3 is that it has a, um, a, a high-speed dedicated connection to a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi or a Jetson Nano. Um, and that, that, uh, that allows you to write plugins uh, or write applications that work with the 3D printer or a machine that work with, with the Duet, but without having to develop the firmware yourself. That will allow lots of different plugins to exist at the same time on the single board computer without overloading the Duet. And you also know that if you write a plugin that breaks as a plugin, it's not going to break anything as far as the printer's con concerned. So um, it's both more extendable, but also a lot easier for people who are developing who aren't necessarily core firmware developers. And it's not like the do it rep rep, it's rep rep firmware that's running the rep boards, rep right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not like that's a, a limited firmware that would need some help to do things. It's already one of the most capable firmwares out there. Like it supports so many different kinematics, but it also has a ton of, you know, advanced features that I don't think anyone else has. As far as I'm aware, we we implement the in rep rep firmware the most kinematics, but we also have. Things like, uh, have you heard of dynamic acceleration adjustment? So what, what you do there is when you've got ghosting on a print and you can sort of see after it accelerates, you have the, the ringing on, on the print. Uh, you measure the frequency of that, input that into the firmware and it will cancel out ringing at that frequency. 3D print is a little bit complicated, so sometimes you have multiple ringing frequencies. You can only ca ca cancel out one at this point in time, but generally your primary ringing frequency can be canceled out. We also, I mean, it's now in other firmwares, but we are the first people to introduce the delta calibration and also linear advance or pressure advance as we call it. Uh, all of those things started uh, in RepRap firmware. And the way you configure that is not through some config file that you have to compile and then upload and see if it works and then re-upload it. You, you can all do that in real time, right? The way that we work with RepRap firmware is that everything is G-code. All the configuration codes are G-code and you can, with a very few exceptions, you can enter them in the command into the console at any point in time. So if you're doing a test print and you want to modify anything, you can just enter that G-code and change it. So whatever it happens to be uh, that is a configuration setting, you can enter it uh, while the print's going on. But it also means that uh, setting up your config's really easy because you can just read through a, a bunch of G codes that the same G code in your config file as you would enter when you're testing. So you test and tune, fine tune your G code and just stick it in your config file and that's your config from then onwards, yeah. So we've, we've been talking about the tool changer and how you're using Do It for that. Uh, can you walk us through what the configuration is for this specific tool changer? What the parts are that you're using in here? So this tool changer is one that I'm been using for development testing on Duet 3. So I actually have more electronics in here that I need to run the tool changer. So what we've got is a Duet 3 mainboard here, and that has six separate drivers, does the heated bed, uh, three extruders, six fans, that kind of stuff. So that mainboard plus this one expansion board could do the whole tool changer quite happily. That's an expansion board connected by by a, by a bus, CAN bus wire. I'm actually only using one tool on that expansion board. I could be using three. So, so what have people been using Duet 2 for and what is Duet 3 enabling to do now? So uh, people have been using Duet 2 because we've got a range from the Duet 2 Maestro, which generally aimed at smaller machines. Um, we've had a lot of people converting machines of the CR10 style or Enders 3 style at one end. A lot of Delta printers. I think where we started and had an initial strength 
while other firmwares have caught up is with Delta printers because of all of the different automatic calibration um, and probing that, that allows uh, very good printing on a Delta printer, which was initially very hard to do and it was a pain in the to set up. Um, all the way through to more conventional, just larger machines, to Tool Changer, E3D built the Tool Changer around the, the Duet 2. Um, but we've also got people doing larger machines um, and recently CNC. So that's been quite a good, uh, a good thing to see people using the Duet in, in lots of different CNC machines. Yeah. And your drivers have traditionally always been a very powerful option um, on the Duet 2 already, where you're 2 amp RMS or peak? So 2.4 amps peak. Oh, yeah, and that's that's Trinamic drivers, integrated ones, right? And with the Duet 3, how much current are you pushing with those new Trinamic drivers now? Yeah, so we've got the new drivers, 5160s with external MOSFET. So we are up, up to 6.3 amps peak on those. So, so that is literally going to melt a NEMA 17 if you actually push all the current through it? Yes, we definitely recommend not putting 6.3 amps into a normal NEMA 17, please. A lot of people in the community make a brilliant 3D printer and actually start making a 3D printer company. Some of those companies have been particularly successful. So we've actually got quite a few OEMs now who are using Duet on a printer that you can go out and buy or a CNC machine that you can go out and buy that has, that has a Duet in it. I mean, a great example of that is the, the tool changer um, that obviously E3D made, which is a fantastic machine. Um, and we've with part of Duet 3, we've got a concept um, that we're showing off at the show, which is a, an, an individual control board on a tool. The tool itself handles stuff like temperature control and steps, actually, so that the board just sends out a command like, go from here to there with this speed ramp, and the tool itself does it. Absolutely, yes. And so what we've effectively got on this is a control for a extrusion tool. So you have a stepper motor, a heater, three temperature sensors, two fans, and connections for a Z-probe and a filament monitor, all in a little board that's connected only by can and, and power. So the idea is that you could have a whole bunch of those uh, all connected, all necessarily doing things at the same time, even if they're not printing. So because we've got multiple G-code streams supported, you could have a, a tool management system. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's uh, uh, taking the tools off and putting them on, but maybe it's just heating it up, cleaning it out, making sure it's ready to print. So tool changes happen much quicker. Um, I think, as I say, this is a concept. We're not necessarily going to be selling tool boards that look exactly like this, um, but we wanted to see what people made of it, what feedback we've got, uh, and and test it a lot, and, and actually see what we'd wanted, what we think is worthwhile having, and, and what isn't. Yeah. And what's that? What's that extruder you have on there? Ah, this is a um, an extruder from our friends at E3D. It's quite. That's new. Yeah. Yes, it is new. I think we're not supposed to be talking about this yet. <laughs> No, 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 it's it's launched. It's out there. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, this is E3D's new. I think they they've called it Hermes. It's difficult to see, um, but effectively it's a direct drive extruder. Um, and all we've done is plunked our um, plunked our uh, electronics board on it. And the mountings are just to mount it on a tool changer. So that's Greg from E3D has designed a, a tool changer changer mount for for Hermes. So so essentially this could be just a module that someone like E3D sells with extruder hot and your board, your expansion board on there that is just a plug-and-play module for people to put into their printer and it's going to just work. So the idea is that the expansion board will be set up so it knows what tool it is. So it knows what sort of nozzle it's got, what sort of heater it's got, all of that kind of information that needs to know. So when you mount it on the machine, that information flows back through your main board, potentially in the future, all the way to your slicer, so that you can actually select the materials correctly and the slicer knows what tools are mounted on the machine. So we want to enable that where it's early days yet, um, but we've sort of started with the tool electronics and with Duet 3 and the connection to the single board computer. Duet 2 um, is a lower cost, but when you start adding all the expandability, then it starts to be similar to some of the Duet 3 options. So it really will depend on exactly what expandability and exactly what you choose. Um, because, for example, Duet 3 mainboard has six stepper drivers on it um, and three extruder heaters and enough fans and enough I.O. So if you wanted to make an IDEX printer, for example, you wouldn't need any expansion boards, which if you're using Duet 2 currently, you do need the expansion board. So it'll be interesting to see. I think they, they will run in parallel and if you do a fully tricked out Duet 3 system, it will be more expensive than a Duet 2 system. But, it but it's, it's also, people. yeah, it's also going to do more. Yeah, and you guys are a completely open source company, um, even more so than just releasing your source files. So tell me about how that's, what, what you're doing and how that's working out for you. Yeah, so I suppose, and I think we spoke about this a couple of years ago uh, at the show, was it last year, when you did your open source, uh, open source feature? Ooh, yeah. Uh, 
that was like two or three years ago, yeah. Um, yeah, so we've always been, right from the beginning, we've always been an open source company. And I think a point I made there, and I'm going to make it again, is it's all well and good releasing the source. But we specifically use tools that are open source and accessible to do the design work. So for example, big shout out to KiCad or KiCad, depends on how you want to say it, which we use for all of our electronics design. Because if you make an open, uh, uh, an open source product, but then you publish all the files in a, in a application that you need $4,000 to have a seat license. Altium to, designer. Um, then, then it's how open is it? I mean, that's really the question. So by using KiCad and Eclipse and all these great products, uh, great projects and supporting those projects um, we make it open source from the point of view that other people in the community because that's why we enable it so that people in the community can get involved hack on it and do what they, they want to do with it and feed it all back to us as well yeah any challenges with clones yet yes I don't want to promote the fact that there are clones out there but yes we're def we, we definitely have an an issue that we're being cloned, but I don't think that takes away from all the benefits that we get from being an open source company. So when is the Do It 3 actually going to be out? What is it going to cost and where can they find more information on it? Okay, so the Do It 3 main board, we released, uh, we had a small pre-production run for some early adopters to do some testing and also took awesome stuff for us. Um, and that's, that has already been released. The main uh, batch will be uh, released in early November. The cost price is, uh, for, the, for the main board uh, is 185 pounds. Okay, right. so a little it's, bit it's probably it's probably one of the most expensive boards you can buy. Absolutely, and it's also by far the most capable. That is true, but again, just pointing out, you also have the lower cost options to do it too. Is still in production, and the Maestro. How much is the Maestro? I think we within the Maestro is on our website for eighty nine pounds, right. uh, and the Duet two is one hundred and twenty. So we've got a kind of a kind of range there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we're not the cheapest boards, but we do believe we're the highest quality. And that is doit three dot com. Dot com. Okay, I got that wrong, but we'll put that link in the description below. Again, thank you for sponsoring this trip, or my trip to TCD this year, and yeah, thanks for watching.